meeting all of you together uh, without having to travel long distances and uh, learning something new and maybe this is going to be a new avenue for uh, maybe our schools so i am looking forward to learning something new uh, this is the first time i am doing it uh, we might make mistakes but that's the spirit with which we are going to be conducting this webinar and i hope all of you uh, are open to that that when we learn we make mistakes we get our hands dirty but we do learn and we move on and that's what we're trying to teach our children so um, i know time is running out and you've all been waiting very patiently uh, we've been doing a lot of work uh, in the area of flipped classroom and i am going to be sharing with you some of my experiences with technology and in particular the flipped classroom um, we're going to screen share with you a presentation which i've put together Already all right yeah. so it's already shared uh, on demystifying the flipped classroom um, so uh, like we all just said we're in the midst of a learning revolution for the first time ever we are meeting on a very very unconventional platform uh, we've opening our life and our world to new possibilities so you know what in education and if we look at the if we use the twitter lingo, lingo uh, it's like personalization is trending we've just been reading a lot of news about the khan academy coming to india and uh, you know sharing their content in hindi and english uh, to be used by indian schools and as you must be knowing khan academy uh, was one of the pioneers of the flipped classroom and i've been following uh, his uh, uh, you know his work and his philosophy and that's maybe from where we started our concept of flipped classroom and so today flipped classroom is definitely the new buzzword uh so to in 2012 till 2012 i would say we were like in any other school a young school in its infancy trying to uh, establish an identity for ourselves looking for uh, things which would make us uh, you know stand out in the uh, map on the map of progressive schools but we were still following a very traditional method of teaching and learning in our classrooms and this is how our classroom looked like if you can see i mean i think we can all identify the teacher just standing in front of the classroom the children uh, all following direct direct instructions so what is happening we all have you know large class sizes students with diverse profiles teacher in front of the classroom giving a lecture and that's historically been her forte uh, a vast syllabus and when we say syllabus it's something which we which is dictated by the textbook uh, which would be dictating the course of our classroom and our delivery mechanism we all have uh, faced the time constraint a resource constraint skill constraint in our classrooms uh, students who have you know whose attention spans are shortening by the hour and they need instant feedback instant gratification um uh with the coming of cce and a lot of other reforms uh, you know we had a lot of repetitive energy consuming routine tasks to do and in fact that was one of the prompters for us to uh, try and look for solutions which would make our work more efficient more effective and less monotonous and of course uh, a lot of inappropriate technology i mean we had smart boards we had computers in the classroom but still not really uh, helping us to seamlessly integrate technology and improve the pedagogy you know uh, technology just for the sake of technology doesn't really help if we could have technology and pedagogy aligned to each other uh, that's what would make uh, a difference to our classroom so that's what we were looking for um, not much attention being given to classroom interactions with a large numbers a vast curriculum you know a vast syllabus to cover teachers always finding time a constraint very little time left for real time classroom interactions uh, do we do though we did use a lot of questioning and inquiry based uh, approach uh, it was not really effective and some students would be answering some many of them would be lost in the classroom and every time i you know we gave a lecture or a direct instruction we assumed that all our students were grasping but was that the truth no so we were using a one size fits all kind of approach with very little time for individual attention to be given to students for their with their individual questions uh, we were not being able to tackle any kind of uh, misconceptions or uh you know wrong ideas about a concept or uh, clarifications 
uh, students were just uh, adapting to the curriculum. They had to either sometimes slow down, sometimes speed up to match the pace of the curriculum. Uh, in the process, we found that many children were checked out because the you know it was too slow a pace for them and others who were checked out because the curriculum was too advanced so we were walking uh, uh, on a very very safe uh, uh, moderate average path so at this point of time we wanted to actually conduct a poll but something went wrong but i'm just going to ask you to raise your hands on this particular question i mean just to make it more interactive and please feel free to you know give us your thoughts the question that we're asking you this morning is in traditional classrooms of today you know who is the in the driver's seat who controls the flow of the classroom content delivery is it the teacher is it the student or the content which is determined by the textbook so uh, uh, uh lohit so I'm what you can what you can do is uh, you can type your answer on the chat box there and just type that and send it to everybody so there we'll know what you're saying you either say teacher you say student or you say the content so the question is in traditional classrooms today who is in the driver's seat who controls the flow of classroom content delivery so what's your answer if your answer is teacher you can type teacher on uh, on the chat box and you can say student if you want if you think it's student or the content so we actually had a proper poll uh, designed for this where you could have just selected an answer we could have displayed um, the results right there but we just changed the laptop and something went wrong but sorry for that but anyway we can do it this way too so please go ahead and type your answers and then we can proceed So a lot of people are saying teacher. Somebody said uh, teacher followed by textbook followed. Huh, text textbook followed, followed by the teacher. Yeah. Textbook followed by the teacher, and somebody said teacher and kids both. So you can choose both the answers. Okay. Hmm. And uh, Karishma says it's student. All right. So most of the people have said teacher. Are we still waiting for people to uh, respond? People can respond. Okay. So let's move ahead. Okay. Another question. How do you think maximum student engagement can be ensured in the classroom? If they read about the concept at home before it is taught, by solving problems in the class instead of at home, by playing animations or videos in the class, by increasing the teacher interaction time in class, or by making the classroom more experiential. So I understand these are very long statements to type. So what you yeah. can do is you can just say one, two, three, four, or five. So yeah. whichever option you choose, whichever you think, and you can choose multiple too. Um, should we keep multiple? Yeah. Or it's, it's multiple. Okay. Yes. So you can choose one, three, five, or you can say two, three, four. So whichever you choose, you can again type it on your um, chat box. So somebody has said one, two, five. That is, if they re so the question is, how do you think maximum student engagement can be ensured in classroom? So if they read, if they have read book, uh, that is, if they have read the concept to be taught prior coming to the class, uh, or by solving problems in the class instead of at home. Normally we give out, uh, you know, homework to solve uh, questions at home. So should you be solving questions in the class, or by playing more animations and videos in the class, like a lot of digital classroom companies would do? They would play a lot of uh, you know videos animations. and animations in the class, or by increasing the teacher interaction time in the class. Uh, so you'd want to take away a lot of technology and say, all right, this is the teacher interact with the student, and that's how we can ensure maximum student engagement. Or by making the classroom more experiential. So you take them outside the class, you actually engage them with a lot of experiments. And okay, yeah. somebody has said interesting. all. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting, Lohit. Uh, Nandita Sahu says all. So okay, so if you're saying all these. Things would increase student engagement, but do we have the time for to to do all this? That's a big question. But you know, you see, all all of them have said five. 
uh, so Fire. that's one thing that's common experience on all of us. Let's, let's go yes down. absolutely so everybody has said five not a single person who has left five which means uh, everybody wants experiential learning some people have said one but most of them have not said one okay actually most of them have said one yeah so if they have read about the concept five. to be okay that so there are three people who have not said one otherwise otherwise uh, everybody has said one and two is there in three people and otherwise so what is by solving problems in the class instead of one. okay so this is our response i'm really sorry about the poll if we had the poll you could have seen all the results right here probably in the next webinar we'll ensure that it's there all right uh, can we close this yeah you can go ahead and uh, okay yeah. uh okay so one more question before we move on how useful do you think is peer interaction in a classroom environment uh, so we could maybe uh, how useful so you could rate it on a scale of one to five one being the lowest and a five being the maximum so you could just put the number down between one and five how useful is peer interaction so everybody's saying very and yes somebody has said five five yes okay so yeah i think yeah, that's so a very all, obvious answer to this yeah. one that everybody would want to have peer interaction there's nobody would say no peers should not interact hmm. so that was a trap question i think <laughs> okay, yeah let's move okay yeah. so yeah. coming back to our experience i mean you know we all agree with you know what you have also polled for and so what we were looking for in our school and in our classrooms we are looking for making our classrooms an ideal classroom so if you look at this picture uh, the teacher standing in front of the classroom no we didn't want that we want the teacher to be somewhere in the center of the classroom okay that's what an ideal classroom would look like uh, we wanted the teacher to be spending more time with the students and not in front of the classroom at in, writing on the board standing near the board we wanted the teacher not just to lecture but to interact more with students you can yeah, see that a little slow because you know the yeah. changes there will be short okay. in some time so you can go a little slow with the slides so that we right. can see uh, the slides while you speak yeah. okay all right uh, another scenario that that we would look for maybe a you know teacher giving time for students to ask their questions and the student teacher being able to address all of them so all the things that you know we've been discussing so far um more time for non lecture activities whether it's a demonstration or a lab activity or a group discussion or maybe just answering questions problem solving higher order uh, here there are you know the teachers uh, you know asking some questions children are responding group discussions so this is the kind of uh, classroom that we all all would want and and we too wanted that so we come back to another question for the morning what do you think would is a scenario we would prefer maximizing technology in the classroom because we there's so much buzz about uh, bringing class technology into the classroom and and the associated fear with that and the second uh, option is do you want to maximize teacher time in the classroom or both so uh, no, but let's how can let's you maximize both? Uh, so yeah. there, there should be a choice right yeah. <laughs> either you okay. maximize technology in the classroom or you maximize the teacher time in the classroom yeah let's see some people may say both let's see okay so if they say yeah. both then i i would definitely want to know how do you maximize both <laughs> all okay. right so uh, uh, so, so what you can respond that. to is by saying either technology or teacher or both i i would personally want you to prefer either one of them okay. not say both because that's so, an easy answer uh which one would you prefer having more technology in the classroom or having more teacher uh, time in the classroom what should be the stress on uh, in the class okay so we are getting responses here uh teacher two is teacher one is technology okay so so everybody is saying teacher yeah except one, except one person, person who has said, said technology okay so we have miss uh, kamal, kamal baduni um she says we should have more technology in the classroom okay okay and somebody has said both okay you one yeah uh, let okay. me see if more people have yeah, yeah. lot of oh, yes. oh, lot yes, of people yes. have responded so more teachers teacher. time okay uh, more teacher time in the classroom balance so you want to balance okay yeah that's that's the answer but um, seamless tech intervention yes okay interesting interesting okay interesting very nice yes, answer yes okay so let's continue yeah 
very very uh, uh, right because you know uh, we had technology in the form of smart boards and computers and all of that in the classroom but i found that uh, the teacher was either moving from the computer to the textbook to the classroom and and it's every time she went back to the computer she would lose connect with her children so uh, seamless integration was just not happening uh, so that was a big challenge that we had so we had technology uh but we still did not find it efficient enough uh, so the next question that i'm asking you is what should be a teacher's ultimate objective with her lesson plans should it be to cover every topic as per the syllabus which is decided by uh you know the uh, textbook or should it be ensuring student score the maximum in the test we all know how important uh, grades and scores are especially in our country or would it be ensuring every child knows and understands the concept that is being taught so uh, option 1 2 3 you could you could just uh, type that you can take this out just repeat the question okay so all right uh i think we were off for some time because of the network issue so we back if you're able to hear us just one raise hand would do if you could just raise hand to know to tell us uh, that you can hear us if you could raise hand uh, if you can okay yeah yeah a yeah. lot of people have raised hand okay sorry sorry, so sorry for that back. yeah we back so let let us repeat the question the poll the final poll is on the question what should be a teacher's ultimate objective with her lesson plan so when a teacher creates a lesson plan what is the ultimate objective she has in mind first covering every topic as per as per the syllabus two ensuring students score the maximum in the tests three ensuring every child knows and understands what is taught wow so this is really tricky question huh? so uh, you can choose only one of these three what should be your ultimate objective obviously all three are important and that's what you cover but what is that one ultimate objective that you keep in mind um when you actually plan the lessons what should it be for a teacher so please go ahead and uh, respond on the chat okay so c 3333 everybody has said uh, yes yeah. so it's a unanimous this <laughs> that we we have to ensure that children understand what they are being taught right and know and understand okay all right so we also had similar uh, challenges uh, similar dilemmas or questions that but, but are point, very very universal yeah. see you ask a question True. that what should be the ultimate objective and yeah. everybody said that to ensure every child knows and understands what is taught yes but a lot of times when we uh, take a step in the school is that the step which is the best to ensure that every child knows and understands or do we take steps to ensure that he scores maximum in the tests or at times to ease the teachers work so for example if you have a digital classroom in the in the school and you playing animations isn't that isn't that to ease out the teachers work because now she doesn't have to probably draw the hearts diagram but if she had drawn the diagram probably the student ha- would have yeah. learned on how to draw the diagram yeah. and now he is just going to imagine it's going to ease out the work for a teacher and studies have shown that these students don't really learn so much looking at an animation in the classroom as opposed to teacher so though we do the wishful thinking is to ensure every child knows and understands what we do in reality is to Absolutely. normally take a shortcut and, and that takes us back to the challenges that we listed uh, earlier on that you know with 
time constraint and resource constraint it's not possible for us to so there's a trade off so if i'm trying to ensure that children are learning the best uh, the you know the the understanding is perfect uh, somewhere i may not be able to complete my syllabus so that was a trade off that we we faced uh, in our daily uh, routine and that is when we decided that we need to change the way maybe we are looking at teaching and learning in our classrooms historically we've been doing this the teacher uh, you know preparing her lecture coming to class standing in front of the class and giving a lecture giving direct instructions and we thought let's look at a different way and maybe uh, if that is not working we need to do something which changes the whole scenario and that's when we decided to flip the classroom so what happens when we flip the classroom when we flip the classroom we flipping teacher instruction so that students watch and listen to her lectures for homework so the lecture is now at home and not in class and then use her precious class time for what previously was done in homework so that's the flip that has happened the homework has become the classwork and classwork has become homework tackling difficult problems working in groups researching collaborating crafting creating all that happening in the classroom and the lecture going into the house at home classrooms become laboratories or studios and yet content delivery is preserved because the content delivery is still happening is just that the venue of the content delivery has changed from the classroom to the home and the teacher is still uh you know the same the teacher in the classroom and the teacher at home is still the same so one of the things that we realized early on was that uh well, typically when the teacher gives a lecture at home and gives assignments and problems to be solved uh, at home that uh, gives a lecture in class and assignments for home uh when the children went back to class even if they had been completely attentive and which is not uh, which is a tall order uh even then they found that you know some there were somewhere there were gaps in their understanding and when they started to solve problems they found that there were these gap gaps in understanding which were not allowing them to uh solve the problems and that's when they needed the teacher that's when they needed an expert help to uh you know help them solve the problems and if we could change that scenario and if we could bring the problem solving into the classroom that would be the time when the child would have the teacher when he needed him or her the most and that's the plan principle on which pr the flipped classroom is based so what did we do we started to you know uh, we said okay so we're going to now record our lectures our teachers who give lectures in class we'll put them into a a small uh, a room and let's let's start recording what they do in class every day uh, which of course meant that we had to make the lesson really really tight so that it a lot of work had to go into making the script really engaging and exciting for the children to be engaged by the video uh, then we had to uh, you know video capture these teachers and that was an exciting journey for our teachers because initially they were scared to face the camera but as time grew by uh, uh, you know went by and they became more comfortable with the with the camera they started to enjoy and feel a sense of empowerment and a sense of pride in the work that they were doing and that was the process of creating our video books you know where we recorded we video captured the teachers lectures in a very cinematic form of course a lot of teacher training had to be conducted because teachers had to understand now uh, what is it to do write a tight script which would capture everything that is there in the lecture which is there in the textbook and still make it engaging okay and because the teachers are not there now in front physically there but they're there in the video a lot of teacher training also had to go into uh, how do you face the camera and also then into what would now the teacher do in the classroom because the lecture has gone out of the classroom that was the biggest challenge that we faced the lecture has gone out of the classroom the teacher who's historically been only used to giving the lecture in class what does she do in class so a lot of hand holding a lot of teacher training was required for that um classroom interaction became definitely more interactive more personalized uh, more more experiential that's what we all said we wanted to see in our classrooms okay and of course there were challenges that we came across and the first big challenge was and which the teachers were quick to point out what if the students do not watch the videos before coming to class and that's a very very legitimate uh, concern the teachers had 
we've given the lecture to be watched at home but are the children really going to watch them and who's going to monitor that okay so yes uh, no so no, i'm just no i'm just typing to that all right who has raised hands so okay just... okay so so uh, the question that we had in front of us was how do we ensure that children watch the videos uh so our in our experience uh, of course we had children not watching the videos in the beginning and the teachers um, had easy recourse to going back to the default mode which was giving the lecture again and so the purpose was getting defeated uh but then we sat with the teachers and we said you are not going to give go back to the lecture method you are not going to teach the lesson again you have to prepare some engaging discussions and problem solving with the children and once they started to do that there were children who initially did not watch the videos but when they came to class and they found the other children so excited participating um in the engagement in the in, in the discussions in class taking part in the activities and they were getting left out slowly they started to watch the videos at home and this is exactly one of the objectives that we had we wanted to transfer the responsibility of learning to our children and they started to take on that responsibility in a way this was an exercise in pushing their boundaries making them responsible for their learning making them take the ownership of their learning so for us though it was a challenge in the beginning and it would be a challenge anywhere but i think our ultimate objective of transferring that ownership to them gets achieved when we do this method the second okay so there is a question here now uh we said children are all the time looking for instant gratification do you think an immediate feedback to students performance during problem solving does it help in learning or does it help them that's the question we're asking you now okay so i'll just come in again uh technical guy here <laughs> uh so the poll question is does an immediate feedback to students performance during problem solving help so i think the answer is quite obvious and uh, let's see what people write though uh you can type your answer uh, it does help but if you have anything to explain or if you have anything to say mm. you can uh, say it right there and yeah we'll maybe we can for... have a qualitative answer in case there's somebody who wants to not so, just say yeah. yes or no i love the way you are responding actually uh, it's it's amazing in in yeah. just uh, half an hour of time we have 60 61 62 now uh, responses which we've received from people which is amazing everybody is saying yes so th that yeah. had to be the answer obviously um, you give feedback to the child immediately and that's how it could move faster yeah yeah, yeah. so let me just go to the dashboard and dashboard yeah Thank okay you. okay so the second barrier that we had and this came from teachers a major major roadblock because teachers have historically like i said been used to giving the lecture i know i did that as uh, and as a teacher early on and though i uh, considered myself a good teacher but all i did was sit down with my textbook uh, you know break it into smaller pieces and you know the tech con concept and easy to understand format and come and just deliver the lecture uh, so uh, over the years that's what we've been doing standing in front of the classroom maybe using the blackboard to write something but essentially a one way interaction a one way flow the teacher delivering a lecture assuming that everybody is going to be understanding now the lecture has gone out of the teacher's classroom time so what does the teacher do in the classroom and that was a big big concern a major roadblock and barrier to the implementation of this model they didn't know what to do with this whatever you can do you can do now in class you have free time i mean we would all the time been saying and giving that excuse that you know we don't have enough time to do problem solving we don't have time to have deeper engagement and now i have the time but i don't know how to use it that was the challenge okay so teachers knew only how to lecture when teachers are asked to replace their in class lectures with video taped ones which learners are watching at home they don't know what to do with this there was a void in the classroom now so another question now how big is the need for adding to the teachers resource list for classroom delivery so we are saying the teacher now has to really really push her boundaries she has to now get out of go get go beyond the lecture but she doesn't have the resources so what do you think 
do you think teachers need extra support in terms of extra resources uh, hand holding um, uh, maybe uh, some ideas on what what can be how does she take on from from the uh, you know point where the child has already seen the lecture at home and what does she do in the classroom now to keep the children engaged so the poll question is how big is the need for adding to the teachers resource list for classroom delivery so teacher has resources and she delivers in the classroom anyway but is there a need to add to those resources so the options are not required required only in few cases and absolutely needed we need it so you can type in your answers and uh, also i think at this point of time we should open some questions from their end yes. we can speak up questions and okay. we can interact yeah that'll be right? nice uh, so uh, once you've responded to uh, you know to to this particular question let me just go and see how you responded yeah this is so option absolutely needed 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 everybody says it's absolutely needed okay so that's that there's a need on classroom material now at this point of time we have talked a lot about how uh, why is flipping required and if you flip if you try to flip your school what are the challenges that you might face which uh, mrs beer has faced and then probably apart from what she's faced you can face more so at this point of time if you have a question to speak because there are a lot of attendees here so not everybody can speak at the same time So, if you have a question which you want to speak out, and uh, we can have a discussion on that, you can raise your hand. Once you raise your hand, um, then I can unmute you from here, and then you can speak up your question, and then we can interact also at this point of time. So, let's see how many people raise hand, and accordingly we'll decide uh, who's going to speak at this point of time. So, 15 seconds. You can raise hand. There will be a button which says hand here, and you can click on that button. and if you have a question i can unmute you and you can speak your question by the way i can also see how many people are attentive uh, at this point of time from here this is an amazing <laughs> software so if you have minimized or if you have gone away somewhere i can totally uh, get all the data on this here we also had a brilliant feature of polling on this uh, which just had some glitch so next time uh, it'll be it'll be good i think somebody is writing questions here how to handhold okay okay that's that's amazing so i think that mrs veer is anyway going to talk about how to handhold so that is something which we can dis discuss mrs poonam gupta hmm. has written this question i sound like um, <laughs> <laughs> that radio jockey you know? this is the letter which has come to play this song <laughs> all right uh, no hands raised so we had only one question from mrs poonam gupta saying how to handhold so mrs okay. veer would talk about it all so right. let's continue okay uh so let's just look at uh what are the benefits gained or should i let me quickly address the okay, question yeah. that uh, punam had raised about how do you handhold uh so uh, you know initially we we try to tell the teachers to do some extra research and maybe come back with some extra information to share with children uh but uh, it is a slow process for teachers to reach that level where they start to find information uh for themselves so um, uh, one of the things that we did uh, as a school we said all of us have huge exhaustive uh, question banks and uh, worksheets and all of that and we said um, you know we we prepare these uh, very ambitious question ba question papers and question banks but we never have time to uh, to um, uh, you know discuss all of them and most of the time the higher order questions the more difficult questions get left out so we told the teachers that you now uh, segregate you differentiate your worksheets or your question banks and say um, uh, you know start doing uh, discussing those questions in class uh, at least the problem solving would begin from there so there were children uh, who were you know uh, uh, not so advanced in their understanding you could do maybe the simpler questions with them uh, those who are understanding faster and go can go faster so you know it everybody uh, follows their own pace so it's a self paced learning environment which you can create in the classroom there are some children who are uh, you know uh, being able to solve problems there are others who need to uh, have help from the teacher uh, there could be peer to peer discussion and they working together in groups so um, a lot Lot of differentiated kind of classroom was created in the classroom with those question banks, uh, where there were different levels at which the questions were being, uh, you know, um, given to the children. So, um, you know, this whole concept of differentiated 
uh, classroom differentiated learning that we've been you know being so wanting to do in our classroom became much easier with with uh, children having already uh, watched the video at home and then the teacher giving these kind of questions in the classroom and say okay so uh, start to solve them and those who are going faster can go faster those who need help i'm there uh, those who want to discuss in groups can work in groups and all of that so that's how we did the hand holding for the teachers right uh any question at this point i don't know okay so maybe we'll come back to questions again but i'm just going to go move on to what so do you think seven, eight minutes left, left. okay so quickly i mean that's there's a, just a little bit left so what are the benefits i mean you know we we're talking about this whole change in the approach to teaching learning it's it's quite a radical uh, disruptive a uh, kind of change that we brought about what we found was the students are definitely more engaged in their learning students understanding and knowing their concepts is one of the objectives that we had listed down students learning at their own pace because they have the video with them they are they are able to uh, you know watch the video again and again they were able to stop the video pause it watch it again re, re, uh, rewind it and watch it and another thing that we did with our videos what we made it interactive after every few minutes or seconds of the video playing there would be a question which would pop up and the children would be able to would have to answer it to move on so there was a lot of engagement a lot of uh, self paced learning that happened and the most important and that was one of the reasons that we actually went in for this model was to give students ownership of their learning and uh, that's so something we saw from karishma yeah. kotwani uh, so i'll unmute her yeah. uh, karishma i'm going to unmute you and you can ask your question to mrs beer and that will be audible to every attendee so uh, you can choose your words carefully and incidentally karishma is from my school oh okay <laughs> uh, so yeah i'll just unmute karishma yes karishma karishma now you can speak your question can you hear us karishma so karishma has also written her question here i okay. just saw somewhere um questions she's Okay, help. Karishma says I don't have mic. I can hear you. Okay. okay. So How to handle question. parents to help their kids succeed in a flipped classroom? Okay. So yes, that's a good question because uh, in all this process, uh, we need to take parents along with us. So a lot of orientations with parents explaining to them what we were doing, why were the children watching the videos at home. uh how much time would they be spending watching the videos uh teachers ha uh, parents had to buy in into this whole model uh and and taken them through this whole journey of how is it going to benefit and of course uh, very critically uh, very critical for parents was the reassurance that uh, students academic performance and their uh, grades would not uh, would not be compromised so that's a promise that as a school we had to uh, make to the parents because uh, you know when you're trying out a new uh, idea there there you know the parents who might say why are we being made the guinea pigs and there were children who asked me this question uh, but i felt that you know we uh, um, uh, it's not enough to all the time complain about a system and not not try out something uh, something new uh, but in the process uh, keep getting feedback from students and teachers and parents uh, so that it it became a very organic uh, growth for for our uh, school so it was not like a top down diktat uh, that was given to teachers or parents or students uh, it was a process in which all of us joined the journey i think that answers your question karishma yeah. and so yeah so we'll we'll move on yes okay uh, the benefit for teachers they got definitely got more face time which they initially didn't know what to do with but then they slowly became more comfortable and some of the classes that i've attended now are full of energy teachers have control over their content and delivery so they're not now just dictated by the textbook and teachers can facilitate and they actually in the true sense become facilitators for the children uh, for facilitating problem solving in class time uh all the kind of uh, higher order outcomes that we expect from our classrooms differentiated learning peer to peer learning personalized learning maximized outcomes and that was the ideal classroom that we were able to create for our children for our teachers and for our parents uh with that i kind of uh you know come to the end of my presentation uh i i in our journey of course um I have to now bring in Lohit uh, from Faisal because uh, 
you know we've had a lot of discussion a lot of arguments over this concept uh, but the overriding and the uh, 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 overarching objective of maximizing outcomes for our children and for our teachers and making them feel proud of the work they do so he's been uh, maybe he'll speak a little bit about uh, you know the the technical part of how did we do the video capture and uh, how to go forward if you interested in this model uh thank you mrs beer for such a nice uh, webinar this was the first time we tried a webinar in the education sector though in corporate also it's not very common uh, to you know to do an interactive webinar for example the you know the poll thing didn't work right now but this was the first time so probably the next time when we um, uh, hold a webinar we'll be able to involve many more people right now we had 20 people um, so 20 was a slot size and 20 were already here and i can see uh, right now 93% people are attentive so one person i can in fact tell you the name karishma has uh, minimized the button but the way she was asking questions we know that she is listening to us so it's a, it's a brilliant way i think to collaborate and of course mrs beer was the expert in flip classroom so we called her okay now we have 100% so it was you know it was going yeah. and i can also see that mrs uh, malika premon has a question so I'll, i'll i'll give her the chance to speak uh, once i finish um so it it was a very nice experience for me um, and my company always keeps doing uh, so i i run fizoc and we've been doing flip with her but that kept aside we also like to do a lot of bring in a lot of innovations in the education sector like this is a free of cost thing for us we set up a studio my team I worked on it that i'm going to use this for my uh, teachers and students I mean, this is the next thing we were to try in class yeah so it's got everything that a classroom needs everything that a classroom needs it's got interactive polls it has uh, questions it has uh, you can see whether the children are paying i mean the participants are paying attention or not uh, a whole lot of features i think it's it's a virtual classroom so this was the first um, of the many webinars which we are going to do uh, do and which is why we we had an idea so when i invited mrs b to do this webinar it was supposed to just be a you know basic briefing session on flip but now that we've got amazing response we had to create extra slots because so many principals were interested we thought why not do a series of webinars it doesn't take a long time for us to set it up we already have a studio here which we use for flipping the classrooms but in meanwhile we can call principals and if you are uh, a principal in a school or a person who's doing something amazing in the education sector we would love to hear from your side too and you could present to a whole lot of other principals so instead of you know like a seminar that happens once in a year we could have a collaborative mechanism uh, a kind of principal syndicate that could get together and share ideas with each other and then um, dictate their terms with the industry on what is it what is the kind of technology they want uh, in their schools as as a group together and not something which only one school is doing and the other is not doing so you know the kind of quality and the cost uh, which comes for that would be very high um cost wise but if you get together and say that okay this is what we want this is in long term which is going to really help us people like me who are into technology could develop something similar and produce for almost no cost at all um so this was the idea and we'd be sending you a follow up email where you can tell us if you have a topic to speak on we can arrange a webinar for you and um, also if you are interested in flipping your classrooms uh, we my team would be sending you a mail and people were asking how to handle and everything so that's that's something which we do uh, on professional level uh, so we working with dps uh, chains we are working with pudar chains we are working with khiran chains so um, obviously we can get in touch and we can do a free um, demonstration in your school also if you want to hear from mrs beer uh, her email id is up on the screen her email id is beeravnita@gmail.com so you can write to her and uh, talk to her um, on email we have two raise hands and we have many questions which have come up uh, let me show see what how much time 6 minutes has left for us to do this uh which standard you started with mrs beer which standard did you start with okay uh, so uh, in a formal manner we've started from grade 6 to grade 12 where we video capture the uh, uh, maths and science lectures of all our classes so uh, from 6 to 12 but the the philosophy of flipped also transcends down to uh, the lower classes uh, of course it's done differently uh, in a different variant the teachers are uh, you know adapting tweak tweaking it to their requirements to the children's requirements so a lot of solution that we've used uh, but the philosophy is the same that can we collaborate can we make children collaborators 
in in the teaching learning process so that yeah. was mrs P- poonam gupta asking the question now we have mrs malika preman who asks how many videos is the student watching on an average daily okay so uh, the teach uh, okay let let me look at the uh, video watching time would not be more than 20 minutes maximum because um, we don't give the entire video for the children to watch at home the teacher assigns a part of the video so the video though the video may be for a maybe uh, one hour or half an hour 40 45 minutes uh, covering the entire concept but only a part of the video would be assigned to the children to watch at home to come prepared with for the next day so i think it's 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 a substitute to the book right yes, so book, exactly because reading a book was not so interesting and also he had to then go on internet yeah. to uh, figure out more about that particular topic so then the ebooks came hmm. where and you could you know read but now this is something like a video book uh, where instead of reading a book you're watching a video which has a lot of uh, teacher speaking has animations in it has questions popping up in between and also then we have our own software that tracks every students uh, behavior while he watches the video so it figures out whether the student has watched it completely which parts has he skipped we have we also have a score on recall so if he's watching the video is he mentally present there uh, or is he just watching it and nothing is registering in his head so probably if you are interested in uh, flipping your classrooms we can give a presentation on how have we done it and then probably you could discuss discuss and figure out how we can do it for everybody so um, we are almost towards the end 3 minutes remaining so if you have any more questions there are three hands raised let me see who are those so we have malika preman we have karishma kotwani we have preeti khanna so we have taken the first two let's uh, let's go to mrs preeti khanna and uh, okay let me see if they have we have just 3 minutes so questions let me just see the questions uh, how what would be the approximate cost to the school for this So okay I think I can answer that one better. So you can do flipping for free also. There are a lot of videos on YouTube which you can take and you can give it out um and then you can create your own classroom material and you can have some open source software also to basically deliver. But at the same time if you want a company like my company to do it, it costs less than what a digital classroom company would uh, charge for. Obviously the cost depends a lot on what quality of video are you going to create so the dps uh, for example the dps had better budget so we created a you know movie like sequence and i'd be able to send you um, uh, the sample for that and then we can discuss that uh, the next question is mrs palika malika preman uh, does does that mean two per day so there are 20 minutes of total video watching time each subject each chapter which they're going to do the next day would have around 4 to 5 minute of video now that a student can do in 4 minute by just watching it once or if he is not understood he can watch it twice thrice and so on uh mrs preeti khanna asks what kind of resources we can combine in flip classrooms yeah i also could not understand uh, what kind of resources would mean uh, okay so probably she's trying to say if we can get in technology if we get in books something like that so if you could probably uh, you know explain your question in a better detail we'd be able to answer but i don't think we have much much time we the clock is ticking we have just a minute left so let me yeah um, would you want to speak about the principal syndicate i think i've already spoken about it but you can also okay so uh you know we've been thinking that uh, we need to all connect and talk to each other we all of us doing some wonderful work in pockets in our schools uh, but we need to bring it all together on a common platform so we th- thinking we create a a kind of a forum called the principal syndicate where we could share best practices share our thoughts share our challenges um and and have a lot of uh, uh, you know create a, a, a professional learning network of sorts uh, so we'll be sending out Uh, some more details on that and if you feel that it's worth your while and worth your time to be part of that and to contribute to share because uh, very strongly uh, i'm coming from that space where i believe that the more uh, we share the more we grow the more we learn so that's um, that's my thought and if you if you feel like that if you feel the same way please join in um, we will be sending you more details on the principal syndicate On that note let me th- thank all the attendees uh, who have taken the time and who have been present here uh, I hope you were uh, you enjoyed the session we certainly did uh, only some things which uh, did not work well probably in the next webinar it would be much better um, 
so thank you all for coming thank you all you'd be getting an email with the recording of this whole webinar and you'd also be getting an email of principles uh, syndicate which madam talked about so that we can all be a part of the same and if you think you have something to share with all the other principles you can write to us and we can arrange a webinar for you so thank you all for coming uh, thank, thank thanks again thank you